Hey, welcome back. In our second turn of Victory Roads, I keep calling it Roads to Victory, but there you go. A couple of interesting things have happened as now, as we now pay a little bit more attention to the chit pull mechanic, uh, these tactical chits that go into the support support chits that go into these buckets here. Uh, we pick a primary location that is going to be our focal point of the offense for the turn and we we chose to use this central area again and that uh, when you roll to see how many support chits you receive or attack chits you receive uh, you get a modifier uh, based on the where the unit is whether it's in the main town or not and if indeed it is the primary objective primary uh, area and so we picked up five for the northern area uh, behind the camera. And down here, each area only picked up one as we rolled for those. And so then we, you go into your movement phase. Uh, well, actually, one more point on the support chits. One of the interesting things you have to do is look at uh, if indeed you are going to have one area, you, you know, choose an area that's your primary area, get them the extra chits. There's a couple of little things there I think that can be happening. So if I were to, you know, I've got five here now. Uh, once I have one more, I can declare a large offensive here, which would be very devastating to the Germans. Uh, so I have to choose whether or not I want to use some of these nifty uh, support chits or indeed wait and have that large offensive. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is say, okay, well, next turn I could say, well, I want this to receive uh, the chits and it may get four or five chits and they would go into this bucket. Well now I have two areas where I can choose to have a large offensive and that then starts to put additional pressure on the German player and force him to start making some decisions about well, where is this attack going to come in based on where that headquarters unit is which I think I might have covered up. It's down here somewhere but anyway. Uh, oh, here it is here. Yeah. And there goes the air conditioner. Still quite smuggy today. So that's a factor. The other, the other thing is obviously uh, the, the cadence of the game is driven, can be driven around some of these, these large offensives. Uh, attacking at low or lower odds than uh, four to one is not really advised down here. We ended up with a two to one attack. That was pretty brutal. I ended up with an uh, attack a retreat and had to take a loss. While these guys thumbed their noses at the Soviet uh, push. Similarly here, uh, this was a tough attack. Even though I had 90 factors attacking ostensibly what was, uh, what do we have here? I forget, it must have been 10 or something like that, or 9. I don't know what was on the other side of this guy. Yeah, 5. So it was uh, 8 factors altogether, I think, that became doubled to 16, and I had 90 factors attacking. But because there's a river here, the attacker is halved, and then these guys are doubled because they're in these light fortifications. And I chose not to use my elite unit because I knew this was going to be a pretty crappy attack and I'm glad I didn't because I would have had to take a loss out of this guy if I had have used to that uh, elite feature. So one step loss for that massive attack. But when things do go your way, as they have done over here for the Soviets, we had uh, a reduced unit here which we eliminated and allowed, that allowed us to exploit. And we had a reduced unit here, which I actually know a full strength unit here, which we, we ganged up on and knocked two steps off of and picked up an exploit. That allowed us to, basically I ended up with a unit here and here. And there was a very nice 773 formation. In fact, I think that was a lead as well, that these two guys then took a gamble on and attacked and uh, rolled uh, an 11 on a 4 to 1 which knocked him out of the game uh, had a good kill here so you can see we've started to you know break open a little bit of the line uh, this is very thin here there's not a lot to pull forces from in either direction 
the game really is really is a matter of uh, sticking your finger in the holes of the dike as they as they pop up, except that you don't have two hands <laughs> with fingers on them. You've got one hand with one finger, and you're constantly trying to shuffle uh, units along. What I found I was doing is uh, last turn for the Germans was moving everybody down two hexes and, and trying to get units just to cover the background because I knew that this would uh, blow up this turn. <coughs> Similarly for the Germans, I think one of their primary tactics that they can have is actually attack high strength units, <coughs> make risky attacks, and, uh, and hope to reduce these guys so that the Soviets have to start using support chits to rebuild these fellas. I think that's how that works. They get replacement points, that, which I think they can use support chits for or something like that. I, I forget how it works right now. Um, and and uh, absorb some of these support chits and, move, and, and delay the inevitable next uh, uh, large offensive. I think that's how it works. So uh, if it's not... Why don't I just check that real quick? It's talking out my ass again. Reinforcement replacements, page 17. Page 17, page 17. Looking for the rule. If I can find it real quick, I'll tell you what it is. If I can't, uh, yeah, reinforcing them from standard mode to reinforced mode, which is just flipping them over. Uh, Let's go into the eliminated box and then Yeah. Uh, you expend two support markers uh, per TO in offensive mode to put infantry cores into reinforced mode, basically flipping them over. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's that's gonna chew up those uh, those support chits. Anyway. It's pretty interesting stuff. I'm going to play another turn or two of it. I am uh, enjoying the game. And we're going to be traveling a fair bit the next month, I believe. So I may well pack this up just because it's going to get super, super dusty. I seem to be incurring a lot of dust in the house at the moment uh, for various reasons. And I've just found a, a leak in a window and I need to get that fixed. I want to pack all the extraneous games that are out up that are uh, on tables and things at the moment just to keep them safe. So anyway, talk to you guys uh, later on and we'll see how this uh, evolves. If I can work out a way to keep it all set up and it's still engaging, we'll, we'll carry on with it. But otherwise we may uh, you know, set this up and play it against somebody versus uh, run it in solo. It is a nice solo game though. It does work pretty well. All right, later.